a medical breakthrough. A study published in Science Translational Medicine describes how scientists have successfully transplanted a bioengineered lung into a pig. Scientists created lung scaffolds by taking a lung from a pig and bathing it in a solution of sugar and protein. This leaves a skeleton of the lungs, stripping it of all the blood and living cells. The lung scaffolds are then treated with growth factor-filled hydrogels and nanoparticles, which would prepare it to receive cells from the pig where the lung was going to be transplanted to. The cells were left in the lung scaffolds for 30 days, where it prepared a brand new lung. The researchers noticed the pigs that received the bioengineered lungs managed to grow blood vessel networks in two weeks. Researchers involved in the project said the same process could be used for human transplants five to ten years from now. This successful operation means organ donor shortages could become a thing of the past. More medical-related stories. Limitless blood supply is not too far off. It's taken nearly two decades, but scientists may finally have the recipe to create stem cells, that wellspring of life and holy grail of regenerative medicine. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. The groundbreaking research from both teams provides hope for patients who suffer from blood cancers and other diseases. But tests need to be carried out to determine any negative effects before the procedure can go to human trials. Conscious during your own resuscitation? Yikes! A new Danish study is raising awareness of the rare but disturbing phenomenon of patients being awake during CPR. A doctor at the Euro Anesthesia Congress in Copenhagen presented the case of a 69-year-old man who went to the hospital after three days of indigestion but suffered cardiac arrest while being admitted. A medical team immediately began chest compressions. CPR was administered for the next 90 minutes, with the patient reportedly showing signs of conscious awareness throughout. A high level of awareness during CPR is extremely rare, according to experts, since blood flow to the brain is often insufficient. Strangely, the man's heart remained non-functioning and without electrical activity, which caused him to lose consciousness each time doctors held off on CPR. Despite being given several shots of epinephrine, his heart failed to restart on its own. The man eventually died after compressions were stopped for good. An autopsy later revealed that the patient suffered a complete aortic dissection, a lethal condition in which blood is forced between the inner and outer aorta layers. Since the decision to terminate CPR happened while the man was still conscious, it raised serious ethical questions, including the use of sedation when resuscitating patients. That poor woman. A British woman has lost nearly all of her limbs, all because of one hospital's medical blunder. On Christmas Day 2014, Magdalena Malik had to get surgery at Luton and Dunstable University Hospital after discovering she'd suffered an ectopic pregnancy. While in recovery, she developed a high fever and rashes on her legs, both classic signs of sepsis that doctors then misdiagnosed as an allergic reaction. Her condition led to kidney damage and septic shock, but while the kidneys were saved with dialysis and a transplant, her gangrenous limbs were too far gone. After waiting an agonizing six months, Malik's decaying legs, arms, and fingers were finally amputated. Sadly, her relationship with her partner broke down during the trying ordeal, and she has had to cope with a disability on her own, including relearning basic, everyday tasks. The hospital has since apologized and admitted their mistake, but Malik is hell-bent on taking legal action against them, if only to prevent more negligence in the future. Fetal pacemaker ready for human trials. Researchers at the University of Southern California first developed a micro pacemaker for fetuses five years ago, and the device is now ready for its first human trial. The fetal pacemaker is a slim cylinder with components that include a single transistor relaxation oscillator, an epoxy capsule, and a small lithium battery. 
The pacemaker is implanted into a fetus through a 3.8 millimeter diameter insertion cannula. The battery is able to power the device for about a week. When the power runs low, a high-powered field generator can be used to generate a radio frequency magnetic field outside the body. This wirelessly recharges the battery through inductive coupling. The device, which has been successfully tested in sheep fetuses in the past, was granted humanitarian use in 2015 by the FDA. New study says it's possible to sweat blood. Are you one of those people that's always sweating? Have you ever sweat blood, though? A 21-year-old Italian woman was found to have been bleeding intermittently from her face and palms for three years. She was eventually diagnosed with blood sweating or hematohydrosis. This condition causes blood to seep out of unbroken skin like normal perspiration. It's most common on the face, ears, nose and eyes and is often associated with fear and emotional stress. The woman was treated with a beta blocker normally used to regulate blood pressure and heart rate. The medicine did not stop the bleeding, but she did experience a marked reduction in symptoms. Medical experts still don't know what causes the condition.